This video and all content on this channel is performed by a pest control professional and it is always recommended to hire a pest control pro in your area to perform any pest control in or outside your home. Pesticides can harm you and your loved ones. Anyone who is performing the information in this video is doing so at their own risk. If you decide to try the info provided in this video, please always check with the local laws in your area and read the labels of any product you use. The label is the law. Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers with Green Acres Pest Control with another very interesting video about the side effects and potentially the possibility of poisoning your pet with diatomaceous earth. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and if you really like it, consider subscribing to my channel. So if you've been subscribed or been following me for very long at all, you know that I am actually against the use of diatomaceous earth. Why is that? Why is it that I'm against using something that's all natural, chemical free, and relatively harmless if ingested? Well, that's because it's not harmless. A lot of these websites will tell you that you can take diatomaceous earth and you can use it as a powder all over your dog, all over your cat to kill fleas. And this is not effective. In fact, PetMD is the website I'm actually going to quote um, to use in this video. They explain that using diatomaceous earth on your pet is actually ineffective. It will not kill fleas on your pet and could actually potentially cause your pet's lung damage. Even if it's food grade. Food grade, um, you know, doesn't, it, it, it doesn't matter if it's food grade or if it's pool grade or whatever they want to call it. Uh, crystalline and amorphous uh, diatomaceous earth both are harmful to breathe into your lungs. This is why I'm against the use of diatomaceous earth because a lot of people will use it in their homes. They will sprinkle it on their carpets. They will use it around their beds for things like bed bugs, uh, in the carpets for fleas. They'll use it um, on their pets, on their actual pets, fur. And the problem is, so I go in houses that have bed bug problems or flea problems. And people will take that diatomaceous earth and they will... Uh, spread it all over their mattress. They will spread it all around their pillows and stuff. They will put it in their pet's bedding. They will put it on their pet's fur. Um, and the problem is, is not when you ingest it, it's when you inhale it. Because diatomaceous earth is not safe for inhalation. It's very, very dangerous to your lungs and actually can cause uh, a temporary lung damage and can cause permanent lung damage in extreme cases. So what happens is diatomaceous earth is a it's 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 consists of diatoms. Diatoms are microscopic crustaceans. It's like ground up crustaceans uh, from the ocean. Um, and so it's it's a it's it's like their shells and stuff all ground up and so it's very abrasive. So when a bug crawls through diatomaceous earth, the idea is that if it's done right, if it's a dusty film and they crawl through it, then and it rubs on their body, it makes little holes and little micro abrasions on their exoskeleton, which causes a bug to dehydrate because bugs need water just like we need water, but bugs don't sweat. They keep the fluid in their body. But if you make little holes in their body, then they will dehydrate, dry out, and die. That's how diatomaceous earth works. But when you put those little jagged crystalline uh, things, dust particles, in your lungs, what do you think it's doing to your lungs? It's very similar to what happens when people inhale asbestos dust. It's, it's very harmful to your lungs. It can cause things like silicosis. And this is something that's being done to your pets. When you go and you put dust all over your pet's fur, yeah, you're trying to kill their fleas, and it doesn't work. You know, this is from PetMD. They advise people, don't do it. It doesn't work. You still need to treat your pet. Dust is not going to work. Um, you're just doing harm to your pet. So this is just a warning. 
I'm, I'm really, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just showing you proof. I'm giving you evidence. I'm trying to help you. I don't, I, I want you to be able to provide yourself with safe pest control methods that are effective, not ineffective. So what should you use on your pet if you can't use diatomaceous earth on your pet? Um, there's lots of different shampoos out there that you can use for fleas. There are ba- baths, uh, so dips. Um, you know, I, I don't recommend flea collars, mainly because I've known of people that if pets have been poisoned uh, using flea collars because they'll get, they'll, they won't put it on right. It'll get up under the mouth and they'll chew it, break it open and get all that pesticide because a flea collar is basically pesticide that goes around the neck and is slowly absorbed either into the skin or it keeps the fleas off of the animal's face and stuff. And so when the fleas bite them, they die. Um, that's how a flea collar works. But if an animal is able to get it like underneath their mouth and chew it open and break it, then it can, uh, it can kill your pet. So I don't recommend flea collars. I don't recommend diatomaceous earth. But there are some good uh, treatments out there. Um, you know, several, several over-the-counter medications for your pet. Uh, but the ones that tend to work the best are usually actually prescribed by a veterinarian. I'm not paid by veterinarians to say this, um, but usually they're the ones that get the best thing and they have the cutting edge technology and they, they know because they deal with pets all the time, they know which, which chemicals don't really work anymore and which ones do. Because as you're exposed to pesticides and as your pet is being exposed to pesticides, uh, your body will get better and better at eliminating the pesticide from your so your immune system, kicks it out. And the more it's exposed to the same chemical, the better it gets to getting rid of it. And so what uh, what veterinarians will notice as pets continue to come in with flea problems, they'll say, oh, well, this treatment's not working anymore. We need to use something different. Let's prescribe something different. And so you will get better treatment by just going to the vet. But if you cannot afford a vet, then you can try different things from like Walmart, you know, over-the-counter medications from uh, PetSmart or, you know, other pet stores. Uh, Go in and talk to the people at the pet store and ask them and see like, especially like PetSmart and places where they do pet grooming and stuff, they may have a little insight on what works really well too. And they may be able to point you to the right thing on the counter. Now, I don't do pets. I don't, uh, I don't understand a lot of the different chemical treatments that they use. I know when I had a dog, I used to do the little spot on the back of the neck and that always worked for me. My dog never had fleas. I always treated my dog for fleas. Uh, I treat around my house and my yard and stuff for fleas. I've got other videos on how to kill fleas effectively. So, um, in fact, I'll link it in the cards, you know, right here, right here, wherever YouTube puts it. It'll be like a little icon with like a little eye on it. So click that if you want to go watch my video on how to kill fleas in your yard and in your home. But um, anyway, hopefully this video will help you and keep you from, you know, accidentally poisoning your pets because we don't want to do that. We want to be effective at getting rid of bugs and we don't want to harm our pets. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you really like it, consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. So have a great day. Hey, don't forget, before you click off of this video, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And visit me every Thursday night when I live stream. I live stream where you can call me. I have a phone number. You can call me. And I will answer your questions live on the air. So like I said, every Thursday night after 9 o'clock Eastern Time, I live stream. And I really can't wait to see you there. Get some questions and ask me. Y'all have a good one. I'll see you later. Thanks.